During the first Liberian Civil War, President Samuel Doe was killed, but numerous factions fight for power. There were two branches of the National Patriotic Front of Liberia, led by Charles Taylor and Prince Johnson respectively, and their main opposition came from Ulimo, which was predominantly made up of Muslim Kron and Mandinka fighters, and even they split along ethnic lines. But with the help of West African states, the different factions agreed to lay down their arms in 1997, and an election was held that July. Taylor won with 75% of the vote, but many feared a return to war if he'd lost. Yet, despite agreeing to share power, he tried to purge his opponent from government in 1998, like Roosevelt Johnson of Ulimo. This led to violent clashes in the capital, and Roosevelt Johnson fled to the American embassy. But Taylor's men attacked the embassy, worsening his position on the international stage. And this also saw the first use of his own paramilitary, the Anti-Terrorist Unit, which was largely made up of foreign fighters and would go on to gain an infamously brutal reputation. However, there was an ongoing civil war across the border in Sierra Leone, and Charles Taylor continued to back the rebellion RUF. While to the north many Kron and Mandinga fighters fled to Guinea, where, under Seko Kone, they formed a new army, Liberians United for Liberation and Democracy, or LURD. And Kone's wife Aisha was the soothsayer of Lasana Conte, the president of Guinea. And through this connection, the president agreed to fund the rebels when they invaded Liberia in 1999. Meanwhile, back in Sierra Leone, the rebellion RUF had entered Freetown, but the West African states liberated the city, and the Sierra Leone government formed an alliance of sorts with Lerd as well. So along the meeting borders, all sides clashed. As the RUF looted towns in southern Guinea, Guinea-backed Lerd soldiers attacked northern Liberia, Liberians counterattacked the rebels in Guinea, and Taylor continued to back the RUF. This continued throughout 1999 and 2000, but as the British and Americans supported the government in Sierra Leone, they looked to isolate Charles Taylor, who was still backing the rebels. The British and Americans then successfully got the EU to cut off aid to Liberia, and an arms embargo was put in place. But this did little to stop the fighting, as all sides began to loot, sell diamonds, and child soldiers were also used to prolong the war. However, by early 2002, Lerd began to make gains south, by journeying through the jungle and outmaneuvering Taylor's men, and they even made it 20 kilometers outside of Monrovia. But Taylor declared a state of emergency, and recaptured Bopulu that September. Then in late 2002, the conflict spread over yet another border, as General Yeaton, the leader of Taylor's army, gave support to the Ivorian new forces. These Ivorian new forces had recently rose up against the Ivorian government, and Yeaton used this as an opportunity to loot border towns. But this just turned the Ivorian government against Taylor, and President Gbagbo helped another group of emigrants form a new army to dispose him. This was the Movement for Democracy in Liberia, and they invaded the south of Liberia, as Lerd advanced on Monrovia once again. Plus, as the country was torn apart, many swapped sides acting as mercenaries rather than fighting for any particular allegiance, and this caused Taylor to distrust many people within his forces, including the RUF leaders. And it is widely believed that he had Sam Bockery, the leader of the RUF, killed in early 2003. And by March 2003, he only controlled one third of the country, and that June, the West African states tried to bring an end to hostilities through talks in Accra and Ghana. The next month, Lerd troops arrived outside of Monrovia and began to shell the city, while inside the capital, thousands of women staged non-violent protests to try and force Taylor to make peace with the rebels. In early August, Nigerian troops arrived in Monrovia to try and implement the Accra Peace Agreement, which looked to create a transitional government made up of leaders from all sides. So on August the 11th, Taylor finally resigned and was taken to Nigeria in exile. But the Nigerians initially refused to send him to be tried for war crimes. The Americans joined the West African forces in securing the capital, Lerd lifted the siege, and a politically neutral businessman, Gayudi Bryant, ran the transitional government. However, as rebel soldiers and warlords still controlled a lot of the country, thousands of UN troops were deployed to oversee the disarmament process. The former footballer, George Weir, was expected to win the following elections in 2005, but Ellen Johnson Sirleaf became the first woman in Africa to be elected as ruler and she requested Taylor be extradited and tried for war crimes in 2006, and he remains in prison today. 